Boom to the hey, all you sports fans out there in the tubosphere. Welcome to the One Man Sports Rant. I am your host, Will, the alternative ESPN Sports Thrill. We're talking about updates with baseball. And then a uh, cool thing coming up that ESPN Sports Science did about the greatest athlete ever. So you see, got the 1962, when they were founded, Houston Astro Baseball here. You see Kim Pock, our the mighty Kim Pock, oracle to the sports god, who predicted the Final Four. And the national championship game, based on percentages, so he's now 22-4. and four. He Shut me up, because I was like saying, well, your four losses are college basketball-wise in Gen 3.0. Okay. Also, our Pi Kappa, Alpha, how sweethearts. For the Ole Miss are. All right. So just briefly, I'm not going to be talking too long. You know, we all understand here, and there is a we involved. I know one man, we, it sounds like a misnomer, but we're all former college basketball or football players and a few Marine Corps recon. So if you wouldn't say a flip comment to our face, and I'm pretty sure that's the case, don't do it from the safety of your computer. It's not going to make it anyway. It's not the point. What I'm trying to tell you is we have to do a show because you all need to know out there how the good ship sports clip Lollipop on YouTube has sick, especially with regard to professional. Uh, sports. It's become m very difficult. I remember in Gen 1.0, Gen 1, could do 50 minutes worth of, uh, you know, the first half and then the second half in the NBA playoffs. That ain't going to happen this year. There has to be an amalgamation, minimal use, within the fair use standard, and derivatives. All at the DCMA, which we adhere to around here. Alright, so now you know. So save the comments. For the actual sport event we're able to bring you for a pro bono sport show, you're getting way more than a minute and a half. I promise. All right. So on that note, this show is copyright to the OMSR with brief video highlights courtesy to ESPN, MLB, and or NBA Networks. The OMSR does not own these video highlights, but does own all the other original content, the overall concept here and thereof, therefore, most rights reserved. They retain the last right for the videos. But I've been doing this from uh, day one in Generation 1. And, and so it's like that. But it's become even more so. So you all understand. But it's not that I, I want to have to do a show. I'd rather just bring you a lot of sports clips and, and rack up a million hits each time. It ain't going to happen. All right. So I'm going to use this as a baseline show for uh, how to do Major League Baseball when they play on 60s, 80 some odd games. We're going to do it twice a week on Thursdays, today, and Tuesdays. We're going to defer to Baseball tonight. They probably brought the best highlights of the game. And then after that, we're going to use the, this is the baseline show for the greatest athlete ever. We're talking soccer guys. Basketball. Football. Baseball. Yes, I know, it's not, it's softball size. And when they say it's uh, hail and softball size, you know, hide the women and children, but hide the car first. <laughs> right? And little Roger Federer, tennis. All right? So thanks for watching. No silly DUIs while you're out there celebrating sports. Stay tuned. Bring you more. I'm mostly talking to subscribers here, but there is a reason to, for you know, new viewers and, and would-be viewers in the future, you know, do try to keep it original and, and all that without thinking I'm all that because I really don't. Again, we're forced to do this because of the DCMA. And roll game clips. First, we nominated athletes in 16 different categories. Next, we asked you, the fans, to select one athlete to represent each category. Your votes set up the bracket phase for each category winner squared off in head-to-head -head matchups. Now, to evaluate each athlete, we applied the ESPN Sports Science metric, which accounts for a wide variety of components, ranging from speed and strength to power, endurance, and resume. By examining historical data, archival footage, and mountains of statistics, we were able to assess how each athlete stacked up relative to his or her peers, as well as others in their sport throughout history. The results of this analysis enabled us to determine, from a scientific perspective, the greatest athlete of all time.
our first matchup in the bracket phase is a barn burner. Michael Jordan versus Tiger Woods. First, power. In 2007, Tiger led the PGA Tour with an average club head speed of 123 miles per hour. 10 miles per hour faster than the tour average. That club head speed can generate more than 4,000 watts of power, enough to crank out the longest drive ever officially recorded on tour, 498 yards, the distance of nearly 16 NBA courts. Analysis of Jordan's highest jumps reveals that he could generate more than 8,500 watts of peak power. This created airtime more than 20% longer than the NBA average. In the category of power, Jordan narrowly outranks Tiger. Another factor in our analysis is performance in the clutch. Going into the final round with an outright lead, Tigers won 39 of 41 tournaments. He's won over 25% of his PGA Tour starts. The golfer with the next highest win total in the same time period, Phil Mickelson, has won fewer than 9% of his starts. When we analyze clutch performance, Tiger outpaces Jordan. Next, durability. Tiger has endured injuries to his left knee, tibia, both Achilles tendons, back and neck. MJ, on the other hand, played 15 seasons in the NBA and missed fewer than 7% of his games due to injury. When it comes to durability, Jordan outranks Tiger. Power, clutch performance, and durability are just a few of the factors included in our metric. And after a comprehensive analysis of both men, the winner is Michael Jordan. Our next bracket matchup, Bo Jackson versus Roger Federer. And again, let's look at power. Federer's powerful serve derives from a textbook kinetic chain, allowing him to generate 4,000 watts of peak power at impact. And coming off his racket at more than 130 miles per hour, Federer's fastest serve could be the top fuel dragster over the length of a tennis court by more than three tenths of a second. Bo can generate more than 4,000 watts of peak power with his back and once launched a baseball roughly 115 miles an hour and 475 feet, the longest home run ever hit at Royal Stadium. And in football, he was capable of delivering blows to defenders with over 3,000 pounds of force. In our metric, in the category of power, Bo narrowly outranks Federer. Another factor in our analysis is durability. A devastating hip injury ended Bo's career as early. Federer, on the other hand, is an Iron Man. Since turning pro 15 years ago, he's never withdrawn from a match that he started. A streak of more than 1,000 matches. So when it comes to durability, that's impressive. Federer easily takes Bo. 1,000 matches run around like that in tennis? But when it comes to difficulty of sport, Bo's tough to beat because he played professionally in two sports. Dad calls. Roughly one out of every 2.5 million people in the world played pro football. One out of 4.2 million played in the bigs. And Bo not only did both, he's the only athlete ever to be selected as an all-star in the NFL and MLB. So when it comes to difficulty of sport, Bo aces Federer. And the winner in this matchup, with an aggregate total nearly 20% higher, is Bo Jackson. Another first-round matchup features one of the planet's greatest endurance athletes, Mark Allen, and the man simply called the greatest, Muhammad Ali.
one category which Allen obviously dominates is endurance. In the Ironman event, Allen swam a distance of roughly 42 football fields, followed by a 112-mile bike ride, and then had to finish with a full 26-plus mile marathon. Elite triathletes like Allen have a VO2 max, a measure of the body's ability to utilize oxygen, exceeding 70 milliliters per kilogram of body weight per minute, about double the average person's cardiorespiratory fitness. So when it comes to endurance, Allen beats Ali. But Ali takes reaction time. Rather than only reacting to a visual stimulus, Ali had the ability to predict sequences of pattern behavior from his opponents. This is why Ali could begin to react to strikes in as little as a tenth of a second, truly as fast as a single flap of a butterfly's wings. The winner in this bracket, with an aggregate total 28% higher, is Muhammad Ali. Our next bracket matchup is Michael Phelps versus Anderson Silva. One factor considered in our metric is precision. In 16 UFC fights, Silva has landed 475 of 701 significant strike attempts with an incredible accuracy percentage of 67.8%. No other fighter in UFC history has a strike accuracy higher than 60.2%. In our metric, that precision scores much higher than Phelps. Our metric also accounts for resume. Undefeated in the UFC, Anderson Silva has defended his title a record-breaking 10 times, over 40% more than the second highest total in the UFC. But Phelps is the most decorated Olympian in history, with two bronze, two silver, and 18 gold medals. He finished on the podium in 91.7% of all his events, and that astonishing resume easily top Silva in this category. And while Silva is certainly an outstanding mixed martial artist, the winner of this bracket, with an aggregate total almost 20% higher, is Michael Phelps. Coming up, the next four first-round brackets, including Willie Mays, Wayne Gretzky, and Jim Brown. And later, we'll show you how the athletes would have stacked up without the bracket of ESPN Sports Science Greatest Athlete of All Time Special. Our remaining four first-round brackets feature some truly iconic figures from the world of sports. We'll start with a matchup between the winners the fans selected from baseball in the category we called Game Changers. Willie Mays versus Jackie Robinson. First, speed. Willie Mays led the NL in stolen bases four years in a row, and we've tracked him rounding the bases at speeds more than 21 miles per hour. But Robinson was a track star in college, and on the base paths could reach a top speed of 22 miles an hour. This enabled him to accumulate more stolen bases than anyone else in his era. And incredibly, he successfully stole home 19 times, the most of anyone who started his career after 1920. In our metric, in the category of speed, Robinson edges out Mays. Another factor in our analysis is versatility. At UCLA, Robinson was the first to ever letter in four varsity sports. And at the time, he actually wasn't that great in baseball. In football, he led the nation in punt return yards two years in a row. And during those same two years, as a basketball guard, he led the conference in scoring. And in track and field, he won a national title in the long jump, launching nearly 25 feet. That's a distance farther than an NBA three-point line to the hoop. So when it comes to versatility, Robinson scores higher than Mays. Their metric also incorporates power. 
During a 13-year span in his prime, Mays generated enough power to slug 518 home runs, 76 more than any other player in that period. If each of his career total 660 homers averaged 375 feet, that adds up to almost 47 miles of home runs. Our data shows Mays was unquestionably the better baseball player. But when assessing pure athletic ability and analyzing every category in our metric, the winner in this matchup with an aggregate total roughly 5% higher is Jackie Robinson. Our next bracket matchup, Pele versus Tony Hawk. First, speed. Pele was one of the fastest soccer players in his era. We've tracked him running at speeds over 22 miles per hour, on par with some of today's fastest strikers. And our video analysis suggests that even while dribbling with the ball never more than two yards from his feet, Pele could still run a 4.740. In speed, Pele outranks Hawk. Another factor in our analysis is nerve. Riding at speeds up to 30 miles an hour, Hawk invented tricks that peaked at more than 20 feet high. One foot off the top of the lip could result in a seven foot drop, but four feet away from the lip could mean a fall twice as far, with potential landing forces of more than 2,000 pounds of force. So when it comes to nerve, Hawk scores higher than Pele. But after a thorough analysis of both athletes, the winner with an aggregate total almost 30% higher is Pele. Next, it's the man selected to represent the category of football, taking on a driver called the Intimidator. Dale Earnhardt Sr. versus Jim Brown. One factor that stands out in our analysis is endurance. Temperatures inside a NASCAR race car can get up to 130 degrees. That's hotter than the average summer highs in Death Valley. Because of this heat and exertion, the heart rate of a driver can stay at around 130 beats per minute, as high as elite marathoners. But NASCAR drivers maintain that rate for up to four hours. So when it comes to endurance, Earnhardt outranks Brown. Our metric also considers strength. Experiencing up to three Gs in a turn made Earnhardt's 11-pound arms feel like they each weighed more than 30 pounds. During a 500-lap race, Earnhardt no. essentially had to do 1,000 30-pound reps. Well, let's, let's have everybody come see the cheerleader here. But Brown yeah. was one of the With stockings on and nothing else. Mm -hmm. At 232 pounds, almost 10 pounds heavier than today's average running back, Brown delivered stiff arms with an estimated 1,500 pounds of force. And video analysis reveals that he could drag more than 800 pounds of defenders over five yards. This legendary brute strength helped Brown lead the NFL in rushing in eight of his nine seasons. In the category of strength, Brown beats Earnhardt. And after plugging all the data into our metric, the winner with an aggregate total more than 36% higher is Jim Brown. Our next bracket matchup, Carl Lewis versus Wayne Gretzky. One factor in our analysis is reaction time. In a sport where pucks travel at speeds of up to 100 miles an hour, exceptional reaction time is key. A neurologist who spent years researching long loop reflexes, which are responsible for physical reactions to sensory stimuli, determined that Gretzky had the fastest reflex arcs of any human he ever studied. This is one reason why Gretzky is the only player in NHL history to score 200
100 points in a season, and he did it four times. So in terms of reaction time, Gretzky outranks Lewis. Our metric also considers speed. In order to long jump nearly 30 feet, about the length of a fire truck, speed is critical. Just a one mile per hour decrease in takeoff velocity can shorten distance by 16 inches. In the 1988 Olympic 100 meter final, Carl Lewis reached a peak velocity of 27 miles per hour. So in the category of speed, Carl Lewis outranks Gretzky. Our analysis also takes into account resume. Carl Lewis had 65 consecutive victories in the long jump. He won eight world championships, nine Olympic golds, and for a time was simply the fastest man alive. But even after 14 years of retirement, Wayne Gretzky still owns the NHL records for points, hat tricks, goals, assists, and MVPs. In fact, he holds the record for most records with 58, 41 more than any other hockey player ever. So in our metric, Gretzky's resume outscores Lewis's. And after applying our metric to both men, the winner of this bracket, with an aggregate total about 34% higher, is Wayne Gretzky. Coming up, the brackets continue with the Elite Eight.